Initially, God created man and woman in his image and likeness. But the first woman, Lilith, was not content with her place in the world. Lilith, a prominent figure in Sumerian and Hebrew traditions, has roots in ancient Sumerian civilization, where she was known as Ardit Lily. This designation changed through the ages and cultures, becoming Lamashtu in the Babylonian and Assyrian traditions. In this context, she was considered Pazuzu's partner, known as the Prince of Demons. This change of names and roles is testimony to the evolution of beliefs across different cultures and eras. The Babylonian influence on the Jews who lived in Babylon led to the incorporation of this myth into their culture, bringing it back to their land of origin. In the Jewish tradition, the name Lilith acquires a new dimension, appearing in sacred texts such as the Babylonian Talmud and the Zohar. These texts, particularly the tractates of Baba Butra, Erevin, Nidda, and Shabbat, provide a deeper perspective on Lilith in a Jewish religious and cultural context. The story of Lilith as the first woman, predating Eve, is found in some Jewish texts outside the biblical canon. According to these sources, God created this first woman under conditions similar to Adam's, for example, from the same earth. This account presents an alternative view to Eve's creation, which, according to the Bible, was formed from Adam's rib. The interpretation of Genesis 1 verse 27, which describes God creating man and woman in his image, has been instrumental in arguing for the existence of a prior mate for Adam. This verse contrasts with the Genesis 2 verse 22 account of Eve's creation, suggesting that the first woman mentioned may not be Eve. The existence of Lilith is also reinforced by references in the Gospel of Mark 10 verses 6 to 8, where Genesis is quoted and speaks of God's creation of male and female in the beginning. Some have interpreted these passages as indicating that a woman existed before Eve. However, the Bible does not provide explicit details about an alternative female figure to Eve. The figure of Lilith is mentioned more directly in the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, specifically in Isaiah 34, 14, where she is associated with the Lamia, a night creature. This passage links Lilith with the realm of the supernatural and the dark, an association ending in many later interpretations and legends about her figure. Despite these references, Lilith has no clear biblical origin as Adam's first wife. Her story as such emerges mainly in medieval Jewish texts and oral traditions. The alphabet of Ben Sirach, a 10th century Midrash, is one of the primary sources that tells the story of Lilith as Adam's first wife. In these accounts, Lilith is presented as a figure who defies Adam and God, refusing to submit to Adam and eventually abandoning him, leading to the creation of Eve. Likewise, in the biblical references and the Tanakh, Lilith addresses the ambiguity and subtle hints in the religious texts that allude to her existence. Although the Bible does not explicitly mention an alternative woman to Eve created before her, the analysis of specific verses such as Genesis 1 verse 27, where it is said that God created man in his image, male and female he created them, suggests equality in the creation of both sexes. This interpretation contrasts with the narrative of Eve, who, according to Genesis 2 verse 22, was formed from Adam's rib, indicating a secondary and different creation. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus refers to these Genesis passages, reiterating the idea of the simultaneous creation of male and female, which fuels the debate about the existence of a previous companion for Adam. Although not conclusive, this interpretation of the biblical text opens the door to the possibility that Lilith was that first companion. In addition, the book of Isaiah in the Tanakh Bible mentions a figure called Lamia or Owl in different translations, interpreted as a reference to Lilith. This verse, Isaiah 34 verse 14, speaks of mythical creatures and dark powers, placing Lilith in a supernatural and mysterious context. The story of Lilith in the alphabet of Ben Sirach offers a fascinating perspective on this enigmatic figure. After the creation of Adam, God recognized that it was not good for man to be alone and therefore created a woman named Lilith, also formed from the dust of the earth. This shared origin was the basis of the initial dispute between Adam and Lilith. Lilith rejected being subordinate to Adam, arguing that both were equal since they had been created similarly. This dispute marked a watershed for failing to reach an agreement. Lilith uttered the sacred name of God and, with that power, rose and left Eden. Grieved by her departure, 
Adam prayed to God, who sent three angels in search of Lilith. They found her in the Red Sea, but she refused to return with Adam. The angels threatened to drown her, but Lilith proclaimed that her purpose was to harm newborn children. She claimed power over males for the first eight days of life and over females for twenty days. Faced with this revelation, the angels tried to persuade her to return, but she swore she would not harm children protected by amulets with their names or images. In a grim agreement, Lilith agreed that every day, one hundred of her demonic children would die. To protect human children from her influence, the names of angels began to be written on amulets. The story of Lilith in the alphabet of Ben Sirik concludes with this tense truce, leaving a legacy of fear and caution in Jewish culture and traditions. In the Babylonian Talmud, the figure of Lilith is presented with fascinating complexity, hinting at her role in Jewish tradition. Within its pages, Lilith and her descendants are mentioned in several tractates, offering insight into her influence on mythology and folklore. Tractate Baba Butra, for example, speaks of Hermon, son of Lilith, who possessed supernatural agility, able to run over the pinnacles of the city walls of Mioza, eluding even a mounted horse rider. For its part, the treatise Nida mentions Lilith's children more somberly, describing them as deformed or physically challenged beings. A baby born with the appearance of Lilith, a female demon with wings, is described as impure, showing the negative perception towards creatures associated with Lilith in that period. Such births, although considered viable, were marked by a stigma of impurity and abnormality. The treatise Erevin exposes a more intimate and everyday aspect of Lilith's curse. Women suffered three curses, one of which was that they would grow their hair long like Lilith. This association of long hair with Lilith could be interpreted as a manifestation of their rebellious and free nature, in contrast to the social norms of the time. Finally, Tractate Shabbat addresses Lilith's influence on daily life, warning about the dangers of sleeping alone in a house. According to this text, one who sleeps alone could be captured by the evil spirit of Lilith. This advice, rooted in tradition and fear of the unknown, shows the power attributed to Lilith in the collective imagination and her ability to influence people's daily lives. Lilith, a central figure in several traditions, has been the subject of multiple interpretations throughout history. Dante Gabriel Rossetti, a 19th century poet, offered a unique perspective by suggesting that Lilith was the serpent in the Garden of Eden. According to this view, she was Adam's first companion and mother of his children. After being replaced by Eve, Lilith seeks revenge by inciting Eve to taste the forbidden fruit and, according to this narrative, influences the story of Cain and Abel. This reinterpretation of Lilith reflects the evolution of her perception over time. Initially linked to the night, her figure evolved from a serpent to a spirit of the night, and she has been depicted as both an angel and a demon. These varied images of Lilith have been used to explore complex themes related to femininity and power. Lilith has been depicted in various ways in art and literature, from a seductive presence to a terrifying figure, with her long black hair and silent presence becoming hallmarks. Her story has inspired artists and writers and continues to be a source of fascination and debate. Lilith's statement in the alphabet of Ben Sirik, we are equal, for we were both created from the earth, highlights her claim to equality and her decision to leave Eden rather than accept a subordinate position, symbolizing independence and rebellion. Lilith's story in the Halapa tree context is a fascinating tale that combines elements of Sumerian and Jewish mythology. In this myth, Lilith, known as Lilithu in Mesopotamian antiquity, dwells in the trunk of the Halapa tree, a tree that the goddess Inanna or Ishtar found in the Euphrates River and moved to her garden. Lilith's presence in this tree denotes her rebellious nature and independence as she chooses an unconventional place to live, far from divine and human influences. Over time, the Halapa tree faces three problems, a snake that nests in its roots, the Imdugud or Anzu bird that places its young in the branches, and Lilith in the trunk. This situation reflects natural and supernatural chaos, where different entities with extraordinary powers coexist in a reduced space, each with its agenda and symbolic meaning. The serpent and the bird represent challenges other than Lilith's, who is distinguished by her autonomy and rejection of established norms. 
King Gilgamesh, the hero of the famous poem of Gilgamesh, is the only one capable of resolving this situation. He intervenes to expel these beings from the tree, thus restoring order and allowing Inanna to use the tree for her purposes. This intervention by Gilgamesh illustrates his role as a mediator between the divine and the earthly, able to confront powerful forces and restore balance. The story of Lilith and the Halapa tree, narrated by Assyriologist Samuel Noah Kramer, exemplifies how ancient mythologies evolve. In this tale, Lilith is not only a biblical or Sumerian character but a complex figure that crosses cultural and temporal boundaries, capturing the imagination of later generations. Her presence on the trunk of the Halapa tree, far from being a simple detail, manifests her nature as a defiant and autonomous entity. Lilith, the first woman, was expelled from the Garden of Eden, but her spirit of rebellion and her quest for freedom live on to this day.